So, we left it at this point, we saw the equilibrium concentration. So, uh, I will add one more thing over here that this is equal to k s and when you take this, this is equal to square root of k s which is 1 by 2 and that is why we get these terms 2, which also represents that we are that where the delta h f and delta s are related to pair of defects. So, we get the factor 2 over here. Okay, so, that is uh, Schottky defect. Now, we have looked at uh, Schottky. Now, let us revisit the Frankel defect. Here, we will make some more additional, uh, we will have to make some additional assumptions or simplifications, you can say. So, what was Frankel defects cation going into vacancies? So, we can represent it as M m plus V i, V i as I said uh, does not have to be there, this is just to keep a track of the interstitials that are being uh, used. So, the metal ion has already moved to interstitial, so this is something there no charge should have been, so the whatever charge it is at the metal site is an additional charge, so effectively it has two positive. V m double prime. Now, this rate constant for this, now you should be able to predict this at this point. So, it will be equal to x m i dot dot x, these are the fractions V m. So, we have like this but here remember that the, this fraction is with respect to the total number, number of interstitial sites. This fraction is with respect to the total number of lattice sites where the metals are set. So, therefore, there will be uh, uh, the denominator in both these cases are different and therefore, we can have two different cases if n i is equal to n which is the more simpler case n i you remember is the total number of interstitial sites. N is the total number of lattice sites. And we have seen in the example of uh, I, uh, steel Fe carbon that there are two different kinds of interstitials that was the just two examples, there can be more type of interstitials. So, the, there can, uh, the two examples that we discussed were tetrahedral and octahedral sites and depending on whether we are talking about BCC or FCC, there will be different relation between N i and N. But for the sake of simplicity, first let us assume that N i is equal to N and therefore, uh, K f and K f is given like this and using the assumptions as before that this is the dominating defect. Frankel defect is the dominating defect in this system that we are talking about and the fraction of defects is small, we can say that this is approximately equal to 1 and therefore, and another assumption or another understanding we already have because this is the dominating defect, we can again also say that x m i dot dot is equal to x, basically what we are saying is number, but this translates to the fraction because n i is equal to n. And therefore, what we have is again uh, first we will take a look take uh, first we will just take that product which is x v m is equal to k f is equal to e x p I will say Frankel pair to represent that we are talking about this defect reaction, this enthalpy change because of formation of Frankel pair and divided by R t. 
Now, when these two are equal, which is again only possible when this is the dominating reaction and there are no other ways of generating these. If there are other ways, then these two will not be equal. So, that assumption is important and when that is true, we can say this uh, each of them are equal therefore, this is square root. So, each of them will be equal to the square root of this quantity x m i dot dot is equal to x v m k f to the power 1 by 2 and when you take square root of this, this is equivalent to putting 2 factor over here. So, this becomes E x p delta s f by 2 r So, for the case when we have n i equal to n, we get the relation like this. Now, this will be a little different when we have if you remember already from the earlier derivation for equilibrium concentration that this is uh, different when we have n i not equal to n. So, let us consider when n i is not equal to n, but what we still have is that n i is equal to n v that is number of interstitial sites is equal to number of vacancy sites why because we this is the dominating defect domi so which means this is the largest in concentration and therefore whenever a metal cation site goes into the interstitial there will concomitantly a vacancy created and a interstitial site created therefore what we can write is something like this n i by n i where n i at the upper case n i as we know is the total number of interstitial sites smaller case n i is the actual number of interstitial sites which are being used into n v by n again now the right hand side is similar that we have already used earlier which is delta s f by r So, what is this, this become n i n v is equal to n i n. So, there is a factor here and since n i is equal to n v. So, this whole thing will have to be taken as square root. So, n i equal to n v equal to n f p. So, we will call it Frankel pair defect. So, this is not representing actually a pair, but only one of these defects with then it will become n i n 1 by 2. So, this we have to take a square root and therefore, it will also again have a factor 2 over here. Or you can say that n f p if you want to uh, if you are talking about uh, the let us say n v then you can say n v by n is equal to n i by n to the power 1 by 2 and this whole thing or you can say n i by n i equal to n by n i to the power 1 by 2 so we are now able to get fraction of interstitial as well as fraction of vacancies. So, you see that even for the case when n i is not equal to n, we can get a relation and the relation has symmetry in it. When you are talking about x v, then it is n i by n. When you are talking about x i, the, the pre exponential factor is n by n i and uh, presumably you will be knowing what is the n total number of sites and n i what is the total number of interstitial sites given what type of interstitial you are talking about and what type of crystal system you are talking about. 
So, we will be able to uh, find these fractions. So, again you can see that the whole derivation that we looked at over here it becomes so much simpler if we know if we put it in the form of a uh, defect reaction. Now, we will look at next we will move on to intrinsic ionization of electrons. So, we will try to find and first what we will do is when it is localized. So, localized on metal sides. And for that we had seen the uh, instead of F e we will just simply use m. So, it is something like m m uh, electron going on to one of the metal site. So, it has a negative charge hole going on to the other one. So, it has a positive charge and it is uh, nothing but saying that uh, something like F e 3 plus going to F e 2 plus and F e 4 plus like we in, uh, told you earlier. And now, in this particular case, I am representing at uh, the rate constant by k i, this k i is equal to x again. So, we have to write it like this x m m, this is prime x m m dot by x m m square. So, this 2 is coming from this 2, and like we said earlier, the assumptions would be that this is the dominating defect and that would mean that these numbers were influenced by any other uh, factor and uh, the total concentration is very small. So, the total concentration being very small this is approximately equal to 1 which is 1 square. So, it still remains 1 and uh, since this is the dominating defect we can again say that x m m prime is equal to x m m dot. So, we will this time we will directly go and say this is square root of k i which is the rate constant and therefore, this 1 by 2 will manifest itself inside exponential fact exponential which will be delta s formation 2 r exponential minus delta h formation for interest uh, for I intrinsic ionization by 2 r t. So, we get the equilibrium concentration of metal with negative charge and metal with uh, uh, effective positive charge which are already equal which are equal and if we know the enthalpy change for this and the entropy change for this reaction we will be able to calculate the equilibrium concentration. So, this is when we are assuming that uh, it is localized. Now, the other case is when it is delocalized. Now, here we will have to move on to next level meaning some more uh, understanding and simplification will have to be done. So, now we will say this is delocalized electrons. Why is it will be different? Okay, so, let us we will see that in a moment. So, let us say that this is a perfect crystal giving out electron plus hole. Right. Now, this is not localized on any site. Now, classical thermodynamics um, in the sense that we cannot apply number of sites etcetera. We cannot have with respect to number of sites the density over here the fraction cannot be calculated like that. So, classical thermodynamics and accounting of sites and configurational entropy etc. Uh, when we say classical thermodynamics we actually mean configurational entropy cannot be applied. So, this is a caution when you are using it for some relation like this. However, now it is a defect reaction. So, we can write it like this. We will uh, 
we have put a prime to say to designate it is different from it is will be used differently than the earlier rate constants. So, here this E prime which is the electron with negative charge is given by n and since we are talking about concentration, but here on the denominator we will have n effective C meaning effective density of states in the conduction band. Similarly, for P which is the whole which is n effective V or the effective density of states in the valence bands. This will be given by E x P minus E g pi k b t depending on whether you are using per electron per mole as I said you will have to use R or k b respectively. And why e g? Because temperature dependence of n and p or the ionization is given by the band gap energy. So, this e g is nothing but the band gap energy. So, temperature dependence of ionization is dependent upon band gap energy. which is E g and so we get some relation like this which is very similar to what we obtained like for the earlier. So, just making it clear that this n effective is effective density of states in conduction band. this is effective density of states in valence band. So, we have a relation very similar to the relation that we use for uh, defect reaction when there are lattice sites involved. So, this is the form of the equation and it as you can see it is uh, very much similar to what we have been using. So, that gives us a handle to be able to write down an equation when both of them are involved which is what we will do in the next example which is non stoichiometric oxides. So, the relation if you remember we are talking about when oxygen escapes into as oxygen gas. So, let us say we have OO at its site plus and we are over here talking about metal oxide. So, it will form vacancy at oxygen site and initially uh, you can say that it is positively charged. So, something it will have charges like this effective charges like this So, the first case for non stoichiometric we are not yet involving the free electrons or delocalized electrons we are talking about localized ionization. So, here K V O would be given as And apart from these, we also need activity for O2, and that activity for O2 is given by pressure, partial pressure, partial pressure of O2. So, this reaction becomes something like this. So, far, uh, so already we have added one complication here, or you can say next level of uh, difficulty. So, we have O2 whose activity is measured in a different way, these activity can be directly measured as fraction and this for activity of this gas it has to be measured in partial pressure which is given like this. 
now taking so again the two assumptions would hold the assumptions that uh, this is the dominating defect meaning these are not being generated by any other mechanism primarily primarily only the only mechanism that is uh, operative in creating these defects are this non stoichiometric uh, escaping of gas and that the defect concentration is small so when the defect concentration is small the first thing that we can do is make this approximately equal to 1 so because they are so small uh, the defects that these are the majority of real lattice the, uh, covering the real lattice sites now taking so each oxygen vacancy site is creating two electrons and each of those two electrons are going moving on to two different metal sites so the defect the metal sites with an additional negative charge their number would be equal to twice the number of vacancy sites that have been oxygen vacancy sites that have been created so our relation would become something like this and it would mean that if you want to have the cons uh, rate constant for kvo it will now this is equal to 1 this is equal to 1 and uh, this since this number is equal to twice this number and uh, that would also translate to uh, since it is a mo type of metal therefore it will also translate to xm equal to 2xvo and therefore we will have if we convert this to 2xvo it becomes 4xvo square and therefore it becomes 4xvo cube so 4xvo cube into po2 1 by 2 so you see that this relation again we have mm prime equal to 2 times v 2 times voo meaning each uh, vacancy at oxygen site is leading to defect neg effect of uh, negative charge on two metal sites and therefore the concentration of metal sites would be twice the vacancy concentration and therefore the number fraction it being a mo type of uh, solid would be also e twice therefore x mm is equal to 2 vo 2 x vo and therefore this is so we are taking the square of this will will come 4 x vo square and into x vo is will come 4 x vo cube and therefore what we have over here we can write it as x vo now this is uh, this comes to the lhs so it is 1 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 2 square but we have to take cube root so it becomes 1 by 2 to the power 2 by 3 kvo we have to take 1 by 3 of this we also have to take uh, this onto this side which means it is on minus 1 by 2 and then again cube root of this so it is equal to minus 1 by 6 now like i said mm prime by n which is the fraction is equal to 2 vo dot by n this is equal to what we are doing here is we have taken uh, multiplied it by a factor of 2 so this is into 2 so this 2 to the power 1 minus 2 by 3 is equal to 2 to the power 1 by 3 and therefore it becomes 2 to the power 1 by 3 in kvo to the power 1 by 3 into po2 to the power minus 1 by 6 now these two terms remain and we can expand this term so this will become so this is uh, kvo which we, we can expand as uh, delta s and delta h therefore we will have exp delta s and since it is cube root so there will be a factor of 3 over here into exp exponential minus delta h formation for vacancy, vacancy oxygen by 3 r t so this gives you the 
ratio or the fraction of metal side as well as the vacancy side. So, if you are talking about the metal side, this is the metal side with defect that is one electron localized onto it, this is how the re, uh, relation is. And if you are talking about uh, vacancy oxygen, uh, oxygen vacancy sites, you will have to divide it by 2. So, we are able to obtain a relation for metal sites as well as vacancy at the oxygen side. And what we understand from here is that concentration of these oxygen vacancies and also these metal defects, these increase as the PO2 decreases. So, when you decrease this, you would see that this whole quantity increases. So, if you reduce the value of PO2, this whole value increases and which means the concentration of VO and MM increases. Therefore, we have an important uh, understanding gained from this reaction or from this equilibrium concentration and that is that concentration of oxygen vacancies and metal defects, defects I mean with localized electron increases with decreasing partial pressure of oxygen. Now, this is something we can also actually directly see from this relation. Now, if you go back to this relation equation over here, what we see is that on the left hand side this is the reaction, on the right hand side you have this reaction or not reaction, but these components. So, if you decrease this what it means is that the reaction will have to go forward to maintain the reaction constant and therefore, the concentration of these two have to be increased. So, whenever you decrease the partial pressure of oxygen, the concentration of vacancy and the concentration of metal with electron localized onto it has to increase. So, what we are obtaining or understanding or uh, what we understand from the defect reaction over here is confirmed by the equation which gives you the direct concentration of these defects, the vacancy uh, oxygen vacancy defect concentration and the metal with electron localized defect. So, this is the relation reaction when we have localized ionization. Next, we will look at the same reaction, but in this in the second case, we will assume that the charges are non localized, meaning instead of 2 mm, we will take 2 electrons which are free electrons. And you remember that the classical thermodynamics uh, is like we said will not uh, or we cannot take the site ratio similar to uh, that we take for vacancy and interstitials. So, and for as in the case of N and P. So, it, the relation will be little bit different. Now, we will be mixing the two electrons will also be there, lattice sites will also be there, vacancies will also be there. So, we will see how that relation comes out in the next lecture. So, see you next time.